What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Extra Turns. Today, playing the upgraded pre-cons from Strixhaven. Wow! And if you want to get your hands on one of those pre-cons yourself, head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. There you can pick up all of the single sealed product that you want, some of that Strixhaven magic or some of the awesome mystical archives oh, yeah, that are part are of the sweet. set too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, if you want to pick up either the pre-cons, maybe all five of the pre-cons, or any of the cards we use to upgrade the pre-cons, mm. cardkingdom.com slash command zone, they have your magic products, singles, anything at all. You know you're going to buy that stuff anyway. Just use our affiliate link. When you do, you'll be simultaneously getting the cards you want and supporting our content. And big shout out to our patrons at patreon.com slash command zone. They got to watch this episode a day early, so they already know who won. Maybe they're already at cardkingdom.com slash command zone, picking up the deck that they thought was the sweetest as well. So make sure you sign up there, and you can catch Game Nights and and extra turns a day early. Yeah, um, we have a pretty sweet guest on the next episode of Game Nights. Yes. Patrons are going to get to see that guest and that game a day early. Or anyone else. There's no time like now to join the Patreon. <laughs> let's just let's just put it that. If you don't follow us on Twitter, then uh, you don't know who that guest is. You should follow us on Twitter. Yes, do everything. All right, this kind of meandered, but we should get back to extra <laughs> turns. We're going to play the game. Let's see who made the best upgrades. May the best upgrade stand. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Extra Turns. On this one, we're doing something a little different. As you might have seen on the podcast over the last few weeks, we've been doing budget upgrades for all of the new Strixhaven Commander Precons. The goal was to see how good we can make these decks, adding only $30 worth of cards. And now we're going to take four of these decks, play them against each other, and see who did the best upgrades. The deck I upgraded is Witherbloom Witchcraft. And the commander I chose is Willow Dusk Essence Seer. The goal of my deck is to utilize life gain and life loss on my turn. That'll allow me to use my commander's ability and put lots of counters onto my creatures. So then I can swing out for the win and my opponents will never see it coming. So the deck I chose is Lorehold Legacies. And the commander I'll be playing is Oskir the Reconstructor. The strategy is to play a bunch of cheap artifacts which I can then sacrifice to my commander's first ability. Then, once I have some spicy stuff in the graveyard, I can use Oskir's second ability to get those artifacts back for double the fun. Hopefully I can make you a believer in red-white value. And I'm gonna be playing Silver Quill Statement. My commander is Brina the Demagogue. This deck is all about politics. It aims to discourage my opponents from attacking me while rewarding them for fighting amongst themselves. Then, when they've all softened each other up, I'll make the closing statement by swooping in and taking everyone down. The deck I upgraded is Quantum Quandrix, but I'll be using Essex Fractal Bloom as my commander. The plan is to get out some really awesome creatures and then try to make a bunch of tokens all at once. That way Essex can turn all those tokens into copies of my best stuff. Or I suppose my opponent's stuff too, if they have anything cool. All right, it's time for Silverquill to reign supreme. As a member of Quandrix College, I estimate a 100% chance of victory. Witherbloom's about to put my opponents into the ground. Lore, hold onto your hats. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> Everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Yep, let's go. All right, let's do it. I will draw for turn. I will play a forest and I'll pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn. I will play a mountain and I will pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn and I will play a forest, tap, and play Deathrite Shaman. Ooh, Ooh, turn one play. And a very good card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, that Deathrite's gonna be so bad for my commander. Yeah, that, that thing is uh, real bad for you. That's it. Pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn. I will play a swamp and uh, pass turn. All right, I will draw my card. I will play an island and then I will play a Simic Signet. Mm. Very nice. Classic commander play. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right, I will draw for turn. I will play a planes. Then I will tap two, play a Steel Overseer. Ooh. Ooh. Then I will play a Mishra's Bobble for zero mana. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder why that's in your deck. Hmm, no reason, no reason. <laughs> Seems good. <laughs> and I'll pass the turn to you, lady. All right, I will untap, draw my card for turn, play a swamp. Uh, I'll cast an arcane signet. Another okay. classic turn and to start. Pass the turn. Okay, I will uh, draw a card for turn. I will play a planes, and then I'll play an arcane signet. Oh, Go ahead. I like your style. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I will untap. Draw my card, then I'm going to play a island, and I'm gonna tap four and play a reef worm. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. All right, Murph, go ahead. All right, Josh, on your end step, I'm gonna sacrifice Mishra's bubble. 
look at the top card of target player's library. I'm gonna look at the top card of your library, okay. Josh. Ooh. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? That's pretty good. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> and I'll draw a card at the beginning of my next upkeep. So I'll untap, go to upkeep, draw that card, and then I will draw for turn. Value. So nice. much value. I feel like you're gonna be doing that a few times this game. All right, let's keep the value trend rolling. I'm gonna play a mountain, and I will play Sky Scanner. Ooh. Ooh. When it enters the battlefield, I will draw a card. See what's happening? Oh, I knew what was gonna happen. All right, and I don't think I want to attack with my Steel Overseer, so I will pass the turn to you. Oh yeah, because you want to make things two twos, right? I, I do. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna untap, draw for turn. Let's go ahead and keep this ball rolling. I'm going to cultivate. Yep. Ramping on turn one, two, and three. Yep. And I'll find a swamp and put it into play tapped. And I'm also gonna find a forest, and that would go into my hand, but I'm gonna play it for turn. And then I will pass the turn. All right, on my turn, I will untap, I will upkeep, and then I will draw. Jordan's so enthusiastic. <laughs> I like upkeep, I wish I got to use it more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I will play a planes, and then I am going to uh, tap everything and play Felisa. Fang of Silver Quill. Oh. Hmm. And pass the turn. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. I'm going to play an island, and then I'm gonna tap five, and I'm going to play everyone's favorite, Mole Drifter. Hey! Yo. All right, I will draw two. Um, and then I have a zero one, which cannot attack and would want to die anyway, so I guess I'll just stay back and pass the turn to you, Murph. All right, Josh, on your end step, I'm gonna activate the Steel Overseer, and I'm gonna put a plus one, plus one counter on each artifact creature I control. So they're both two twos now? They're both two twos. Cool, that's not gonna get out of hand. Oh, you can do it every turn. All right, I'll go to my turn. I will untap, draw for turn, I will play planes, then I will tap four, and I will cast my commander, Oscar the Reconstructor. Ooh. Ooh. And then I will pass the turn. Alrighty. I will untap, draw for turn. All right. I will play a swamp for turn, and then I'm going to play Venser's Journal. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Gain life out here is good with your commander. I'll pass the turn to you, Jordan. All right. I will untap and draw for turn. Uh, then I will play a swamp. And I mean, everyone's got a much better board than me right now. Mm -hmm. I, I feel pretty strongly about that. But who do we well, feel? Are you get a board wipe? No. I, mean, I think Murph's clearly ahead at the moment. Yeah, I only have steel some Steel Overseer is quite powerful. It's very good. As much as I do think Murph is definitely a threat, I think that what I am about to play will probably be more useful <laughs> against Lady. So I'm going to play Curse of Disturbance targeting Lady. <laughs> so now, whenever we attack her, we all get zombies. And I feel like she would probably have good ways to use oh, zombie that's tokens. Oh, that's actually very true. That's She's true. gonna want to sack stuff, we already know. Exactly, and I don't want to give her sack fodder. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, lady, we'll just put this over here so everybody knows that it is yours. And now, whenever anyone attacks you, uh, they and I shall make zombie tokens. I wonder what you're gonna do right now. Uh, then I am going to <laughs> attack lady in the air. <laughs> And guess what happens? That will trigger Curse of Disturbance and I will make a 2-2 zombie token. Someone's not happy about I that. I made my next turn way better, I gotta say. Oh dear. <laughs> I feel like I'll anger everybody at some point. <laughs> Jordan, to be fair, yeah. Josh's commander really wants him to make tokens. Yeah. And so yes! when he makes 2-2 zombie tokens, he can make mole drifters. You know what? This card may not be all that good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you thought this through? I love what just happened. I, I got nothing to say. Okay. I can't block, so I'll take three and go to 37. All right, um, I will pass the turn. Okay, well, I will untap, and then I will draw for turn. Uh, I will start by playing an Opal Palace, and then I'm gonna tap six, and I'm going to play my commander, Essex Fractal Bloom. Ooh. Cool. Oh, goody. Wow. Seems really good with yeah, curse, <laughs> curse of Disturbance. It seems quite good. Uh, well, I guess then I am going to um, go to combat and Lady, I'm gonna swing at you with a 2-2 Mole Drifter. On attack, that will trigger the Curse of Disturbance. So I will make a zombie token. Thank you, Josh. Okay, and then I would make a zombie token, but because of my commander, I can choose any creature on the board and instead make a copy token of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna choose to get a second Mole Drifter. And when that enters the battlefield, I will draw two cards. Yeah, that's gonna get out of hand pretty quick. I really only drew one card though. I just wanna be clear because I'm gonna have to discard one to hand size. <laughs> what, what a horror. Yeah. And I still can't block flyers, so I'll take two and go to 35. Uh, so then I will go to my end step. On end step, I'll activate Steel Overseer, put a plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature I control. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I will go to the cleanup step where I have eight cards in hand, so I will discard a Lumbering Falls to hand size. All right. All right. Go ahead, Murph. All right, I will untap. I will draw for turn. Let's see, I will move to combat and yep. I will attack Josh with the Sky Scanner. No blocks. 
Okay, uh, before damage, I will activate the Steel Overseer to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature I control. Okay, I will take four and I will go to 36. All right, then I will go to my second main phase. I will activate my commander's second ability. I will pay zero and tap, and then I will make two token copies of Mishra's Bobble. Yeah, it seems good. They look like football, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Foot bobbles. <laughs> and the original Mishra's Bobble will get exiled. All right, then I will pay four. I will play a Hedron Archive. Ooh. Okay. Then I'll tap my Hedron Archive to play a Mind Stone. Ooh. All right, Murph. A lot of card draw yep. and ramp out of the Boros deck. I'm impressed I know. with it. I I'm like it. I'm very impressed. Then I will play a Mirrored Landscape as my land for turn. Then I will pass the turn. Okay, on your end step, I'm gonna activate Deathrite Shaman and I'll exile my Cultivate. All right. And you'll all take two damage. Womp womp. All right, I will go to 38. And 38. And 34. And then I will untap for turn. On my upkeep, Venser's Journal will trigger and I will gain one life for each card in my hand. And I have five cards in my hand, so I'll gain five life going to 40. All right, so I will draw for turn. I'm gonna play my land for turn. I'll play a Witherbloom Campus. I'm gonna start out by tapping all of my lands. I will play Tablet of the Guilds. What colors are you gonna choose? Green and black. Weird. Wild. Strange choices. <laughs> all right, I mean, your deck. Uh, and then I'm going to play Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Yikes. Which will trigger my Tablet of Guilds. And unfortunately, I gained the life from the tablet on cast, so Bloodthirsty Aerialist does not get a counter. But I'll still go to 41. But from now on, when you gain life, that thing gets counters every time? Yep. Okay. So I'll pass turn to you, Jordan. On my turn, I will untap, and then I will upkeep and draw. And does everyone have five lands right now? Yes. All right, I will pay two, and I will play Oreskos Explorer. So you're gonna get three lands? I get three planes. And I have to reveal the three planes, so here they are, and put it into my hand, and then I will play a planes for turn. Uh, so I am then going to pay three, and I'm gonna play Brina, the Demagogue. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will uh, move to combat and I will attack Murph with Felisa and then I will attack a uh, lady with both of my zombies. On attack, I have two triggers. I'll let the Mentor trigger resolve first. So I will put a plus one plus one counter on this zombie. And then from the trigger from Brina, I will put two counters on Felisa and two counters on the other zombie. And then from the triggers from Brina, I will draw two cards and I also get a two, two zombie from the curse. Okay, so now I have a five, four in the air that's coming at me. Yep. And I have a 4-4 four, four, and a 3-3 three, three coming at me. That is correct. All right, I'll take five. Go to 33. I'll take seven. And I'll go to 34. And then I will, in my turn, I have eight cards in my hand, so I will discard one of those planes I drew, and I will pass turn. All right, I will untap. Then I will draw my card for the turn. All right, I'm gonna begin by tapping four, and then I'm gonna play Master Biomancer. Oh, Ooh. nice. Uh, and then I'm going to go to combat, and in the interest of spreading the love around, I'm gonna swing Essex at Jordan, and then I'm gonna swing one Moldrifter each at Murph and Lady. So on that attack, the Curse of Disturbance will trigger. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I have a trigger from Brina the Demagogue, which will help you. Oh, right, and since Lady's not the lowest life total of your opponents, I get to draw a card. Yep. And then I get to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature I control. Okay, well I'll draw. And then I will put two plus one plus one counters on Brina the Demagogue. I get the zombie token from the curse. Correct. But same thing with my commander. I'm gonna instead choose to make a token copy of Mole Drifter. Yep. So there's two triggers there. Because of Master Biomancer, I'm gonna get two plus one plus one counters on the new Mole Drifter. So it's a four four. And then the Mole Drifter will trigger when it enters the battlefield and I will draw two more cards. Oh boy. Jordan, you have done nothing but fuel his deck. <laughs> And because of the curse, I also get to make a zombie. Murph, you got a 2-2 two, two flyer, Lady 2-2 two, two flyer, Jordan 4-4 four, four flyer coming at you. I got no blocks. I don't think I want to block, so I'll just take two and go to 32. I'm gonna take the risky move and I'm going to block Essex with my 3-5 uh, Brina. All right, uh, I will take two, go to 31. Uh, and then I will play my land for turn. I was hoping to draw a better land than this. Uh, it's a tranquil thicket, oh. which comes into play tap, which is unfortunate. Yeah. I will go to my end step. Yeah, I'm gonna crack my two Mishra's bobbles. <laughs> Foot bobbles. Yep. I'll look at the top card of Josh's deck. Interesting. And I'll look at the top card of Jordan's deck. All right. Look at Murph respecting my privacy. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the one I'm concerned about at this point. I know. Okay, then I will go to my cleanup step where I have to discard the hand size because I have nine cards. So I will discard Oversimplify and I will also discard Dika, Fractal Theorist. All right. I'll go to my turn. I will untap everything all the stuff. And then on my upkeep, I have two Mishra's Bobble Triggers. So I will draw a card for each of those and then I will draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna move to combat. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to attack Josh with my Sky Scanner. When you attack, Brina the Demagog triggers and you get to draw a card and I get to put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature I control. Very nice, uh, then I will draw a card. And so my Oreskos Explorer becomes a 4-4. 
All right, so I'm not gonna block. Okay, go to 30. All right, so I'm going to temp three and I'm going to play Audacious Reshapers. Ooh. Ooh. That's bonkers, I love that. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, so I can activate that next turn. Or what if we just had access to it now? Mm. I'm gonna play a mountain and then I'm gonna play a Lightning Greaves. Ah. Ooh, I like your style. And then I'm going to move to equip the Lightning Greaves to the Audacious Reshapers. Nice. Get it, Murph. Then I will tap another three mana and I will play a Pilgrim's Eye. And when it enters the battlefield, I might search my library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into my hand. That is unfortunately all I can do. So I will pass the turn. Alrighty, well, at your end step, Murph, I'm going to activate my Deathrite Shaman, and I'm gonna exile that creature in your graveyard, Josh. Okay, Dika gets exiled. And I gain two life. And I'll go to 34, and I get a counter on my Bloodthirsty Aerialist because I gained a life. And now it's a 3-4. Very nice. Nice. I will go ahead and untap. On my upkeep, Fencer's Journal will trigger. I have four cards in my hand, so I'll gain four life, going to 38. That will trigger Bloodthirsty Aerialist. I'll get a counter. So now it's a 4-5. Okay. Draw my card for a turn, and then I'll play. Gift of Paradise, targeting this forest. And that's a green spell, so I gain one life from the tablet, going to 39. So the Aerialist gets a plus one, plus one counter. When Gift of Paradise resolves, I gain three from that. Going to 42, Aerialist again gets another counter. Uh-oh. And then I will tap three and play my commander, Willow Dusk Essence Seer. All right, all four commanders are on the battlefield. That is a black and a green spell, so I gain two life from the tablet. Going to 44, which also triggers the Aerialist. So I get another counter. Yikes. Holy crap. Yeah. Flying seven, eight. That's a big one. It basically, it's like five counters a turn now. Makes so sense. I will pass the turn. Okay, for my turn, I will untap. Got a lot of stuff. And then I will upkeep and draw, and I will play a Swamp for turn. Then I will pay three, and I will play a Stalking Leonin. And when Stalking Leonin enters the battlefield, I get to secretly name an opponent. Secretly. Secretly. Mm -hmm. Write their name on the other side of the foot bobble. Secret, secret, I've got a secret. So if someone attacks me and I have named you, I can reveal it, and then I can exile one of your attacking creatures. Mm. It'll be a gotcha moment. So I'm gonna go to combat, and I'll swing these two zombies at Murph, and then Felisa and this zombie at Lady. All right. Okay. Okay, Mentor trigger first, this zombie becomes a 3-3. And then two Brina triggers, so I'll draw two, and I'll put all the counters on Felisa. So she is a 9-8. Okay, I will block the 3-3 three, three zombie with my Steel Overseer, and I will block the 4-4 four, four zombie with my Pilgrim's Eye. And then before damage, I'm gonna activate the Reshapers to sacrifice the Pilgrim's Eye. And then I'm gonna reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal an artifact card. It's gonna go onto the battlefield. All right, here we go, one. Two, Commander Sphere. Oh, nice. So I'll put the Commander Sphere onto the battlefields, and then Goblin Engineer will go on the bottom of my library, and I will take two damage. Going to 29. And then my Overseer will eat your 3-3 on damage. Okay. So I'm gonna block your zombie with my Aerialist, and I will take the nine. All right, sounds like a plan. Going to 35. And my zombie will die. Oh, and I get a zombie because of the Curse of Disturbance. You know what? Um, look, I'm doing a favor for everybody on this board, and I know that it's not super clear which one of us is ahead on the board state, but I have a mistake I have to correct from earlier. Oh, no. oh yes. You. So, yes. thank you. I'm going to pay uh, four, and then I will play Utter End to exile Essex. Yep, unfortunately Essex is exiled, and we'll go back to the command zone. Mm -hmm. I think you mean fortunately. Okay, so Essex will cost eight now to recast. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty big blow. And pass the turn. All right, I will untap. I will draw. My board looks. Your board looks way, way worse than everybody else's now. It's way less scary. Mine looks like there's more going on, but it's really because this curse of disturbance is over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will play Temple of the False God as my land for turn. Okay. I'm gonna go to combat. Yep. Lady, I'm gonna swing the original Muldrifter at you for two in the air. I will, I'll block your Muldrifter with my Aerialist. On that attack, I get a 2-2 zombie. Jordan, you get a 2-2 zombie. Mine is an actual zombie now because I don't have my commander. Okay. And then there's the Brina trigger, so I'll draw a card. And I will put two 1-1 one -one counters on a creature I control, which will be Brina. And then the Muldrifter just dies to your Aerialist. I guess then after that in my second main, I am just going to tap eight and I'm going to replay my commander, Essex. Fractal Bloom. Solid. Because of Master Biomancer, it gets two plus one plus one counters. And actually the zombie should be a four four as well. See, look at you getting counters. I'm gonna discard a Mana Gorger Hydra. That's it, I feel pretty far behind now, go ahead. All right, on your end step, I will pay white and I will cycle this secluded step. Draw a card. I will activate my Steel Overseer and put a plus one plus one counter on all artifact creatures I control. They're both five fives now. Um, and then I will go to my turn. I will untap all my stuff. Then I will draw my card for the turn. 
And then I'm gonna kick things off by playing Secret Rendezvous. Not bad. You and target opponent each draw three cards. Yeah, lady, uh, it looks like you need some cards. I would so. love them. How are you gonna, yeah, okay. I would love them. Fair enough, fair uh, enough. Yeah. yeah, lady, we're each gonna draw three cards. All right. Counterpoint Murph, if you gave it to us, we'd probably have to discard. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually true. That's like actually not bad. giving us three cards is not like giving us three cards. No. All right. Well, I don't think I've drawn enough cards yet, so I'm going to activate my Hedron Archive and sacrifice it to draw two more cards. Mm. Nice. And then and I will play a Planes, and then I will go ahead and activate my commander's second ability, Exile Hedron Archive from my graveyard, and then I will make these two Hedrons, which kind of look like kites. But man, why is your artistic ability so crappy, Murph? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> for, to go on record, I did not make these. This is decidingly embarrassing. For decidingly. All right, everyone, check this out. I'm checking. So I have a lot of cards in my hand, but I don't want to discard to hand size. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm going to tap my two Hedrons, and then I'm going to play Sculpting Steel. Ooh, and I can no. have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. I'd like a Venser's Journal. Uh, nice. Oh, man, the life gain is going to be. Um, and then I'm not going to attack anybody because, oh, my goodness, it's still very scary. And I will pass. I'm sorry, Murph, but on your end step, I'm going to activate my Deathrite Shaman and exile. Secret Rendezvous. Yes. All right, that's fine. That's fine. And everybody takes two damage. All right, I'll take two. Go to 27. Down to 36. Down to 28. Okay, so I'm going to untap everything. Beginning of my upkeep, my Venser's Journal will trigger. I have five cards in hand. I'll gain five life. That'll bring me back to 40. It'll trigger my Aerialist. I'll get another counter. I'll draw my card for turn. And then I will play my land for turn. I'm gonna play a Jungle Hollow. I'll gain a life. Go to 41. That'll trigger my Aerialist again. It becomes a 910. And then I'm going to activate my Deathrite Shaman, Josh, and I will be targeting a creature in your graveyard. I think I will pick the Mole Drifter. Okay, it gets exiled. It's exiled, baby. That gains me another two life. That brings me to 43. Bloodthirsty Aerialist will get an additional counter. And then I'm gonna activate my commander. Okay. And because I've gained eight life this turn, I will get eight plus one plus one counters onto my Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Wow, holy moly. 16? And you think that's crazy. I'm going to tap four. All right. And play Essence Pulse. Wow. First of all, it's a black spell, so it's gonna trigger my tablet. So I'll gain one going to 44. That will trigger my Aerialist. And then this new card, Essence Pulse, I gain two life. Each creature gets minus X, minus X till end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Oh, so by the end of this, it's gonna, you're gonna have gained 13? So everything's gonna die except for your giant, enormous flyer. Pretty much. Okay. In response to that, since uh, my stuff is gonna die anyway, I'm going to activate my Audacious Reshapers. Nice. And I'll sacrifice uh, this Sky Scanner. Polymorph it into an artifact? Yep, hopefully a non-creature artifact. Hopefully a creature. <laughs> creature, creature, creature. All right, here we go. One, oh, uh -oh. Angel of the Ruins. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to two target artifacts or enchantments. Ooh. Please! So the Angel of the Ruins will go onto the battlefield and I'll take one damage from the reshapers. And now I have a choice. I can exile two target artifacts or enchantments. Oh, that's cool. I'm just gonna target the Vencer's Journal and the Tablet of the Guilds. All right, they both get exiled. That hurts, Murph. Nice. All right, so I gained two. That'll bring me to 46. All right, so Essence Pulse resolves. Yep, can't yep. stop it. Mm -hmm. All right, and then everything gets negative 13, negative 13. Okay, that, that's my whole board gone. Hey, Josh, you're a hat guy, right? I don't know if I'd call myself a hat guy, but yeah, I own a lot of hats. Right, yeah, but they're a big part of your aesthetic. Naturally, we all put a lot of ourselves into how we look. It can be a big part of our identity. Definitely, and it can be frustrating when something outside of our control changes that. Which brings us to our sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that 50 million men experience male pattern baldness? In fact, two out of three men will be affected by some form of hair loss by the time they're in their 30s. Now, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And hey, being bald can definitely be a great look. Yeah, but if you're starting to see signs of hair loss and that's not something you want, Keeps is a great option. They'll let you schedule a consultation with your doctor online and get your medicine shipped right to your door. And it's not too expensive. Keeps starts at just $10 a month. Plus, they use discreet packaging, so your treatment is your business. But here's the thing, with hair loss, prevent is key. Keeps helps you keep the hair you have, but it can take four to six months to see results, so you need to act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash extra to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash extra to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash extra. Hey, and either way, you've always got hats. Yes, you do. Hi, are you going on vacation this summer? 
some more fun? Well, I, Goldos, have been everywhere. And even though players are constantly trying to remove me, I keep coming back to travel some more. What keeps me going are my Raycon wireless earbuds. Well, that and the fact that I pay for my own commander text, but mostly it's the Raycons. You see, everywhere I go, those, my Raycons come with me. I can listen to my favorite podcast atop Mount Vatican or throw on some gospel music at the Temple of the False God. No matter what I'm listening to, Raycons give me crisp, high-quality audio and at half the price of other premium brands. Plus, with their quick, seamless Bluetooth pairing and cool, compact charging case, these earbuds are built to go those wherever I do. They're travel Fantastic! Listen up, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for fans of extra turns, and here's what you gotta do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash extra. There you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, and it's such a good deal, you'll wanna grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash extra. Again, buyraycon.com slash extra. <laughs> looks like there's another path to exile coming my way. Do well, I'll see you next turn. And then everything gets negative 13, negative 13. Yeah, everything dies. That's my whole board gone. All right, well, I guess I'm the only one that has anything now. Oh, well, hold on. I had reform out, so when it dies, I get a 3-3 three, three fish. So you're not the only one with stuff. Very oh, nice. nice. And continue to hold on, because I had uh, Felisa Fang of Silver Quill out when you cast that, and I had 12 counters on my non-token creatures. So I'm gonna get 12 2-1 Inkling tokens. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, what have you done? <laughs> um, oh, if anyone's interested too, the name I had named was Lady Danger. All right, well, my Aerialist does have negative 13, negative 13 on it, and that'll be fixed in just a moment. So I'm gonna pass here to you, Jordan, and uh, keep it up as blocker. Okay, I will untap. I will do my upkeep, I will draw a card, I will play planes for turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, Lady, I'm going to do you a favor. Oh. And um, give you a token. Oh. So I'm gonna play Generous Gift and destroy your Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Come on. And give you a 3-3 three, three elephant token. Never mind, that's not much of a favor. <laughs> I think that he's a liar. Absolutely I think he's a liar. A All right, my Aerialist goes away. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, we both got three threes. Look at us. Look at us, twins. You have 46 life, however, and I do not. Then I will play Brina the Demagogue one more time. So, with my commander out, I will move to combat, mm -hmm. and I will roll 11 of these at Lady Danger. Mm -hmm. And then I will roll one at Josh. That's gonna trigger Brina, so I will draw two cards, and I will put four plus one plus one counters on two of the Inklings that are attacking Lady. The pink dice are plus one plus one counters. The blue dice represent multiple copies of a creature. Okay, so how much total power does Lady have rolling so, at her? So initially, she had 22 damage so coming at her. So it's 26 now? Now it's 26. Okay, I have no flyers, so I will take the two damage from the one coming at me and go to 26. All right. I will take the 26 and go to 20. Oh, and because Curse of Disturbance is still on the board, I will make a zombie. I hate this card. All right, does anybody, are we, we're in huge trouble, right? Yeah, or we're in huge trouble. No, I don't have answer? anything. Oh, not yeah. currently Just in my hand. FYI, I've got know. answers. <sighs> you want to deploy those right now? <laughs> I will pass the turn. Okay, I will untap. I will draw. I'm gonna be so close to the edge of dead, I think I'm just not gonna swing. What I am gonna do is tap seven, and I'm gonna play Hornet Queen. Yes! Mm. So a lot of blockers. Love it! It's pretty solid. And when it enters the battlefield, I will get four 1-1 one, one flying death touch insects. There you go, Blocker City. Um, then I'm gonna play my land for turn, which is a myriad landscape. And that's it. I will pass the turn, Murph. Good luck and Godspeed. Well, thank you much. <laughs> Thanks. All right, I will untap all my stuff on my upkeep. My Sculpting Steel, which is a copy of Venster's Journal, will trigger. I have eight cards in my hand, so I will gain eight life. <laughs> That's big game right now. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna tap nine. Whoa. Uh-oh. I'm gonna cast Phyrexian Triniform. Oh. When it dies, make three, three, three colorless golem artifact creature tokens. Ooh. Okay. Nice. All right, well, I'm gonna equip the lightning greaves to it. This, I love your plan. Yeah, it's a good plan. It's, <laughs> it's a it's, good plan. It's called Attack the Bad Guy. Uh, and then I will attack Jordan for nine with my Phyrexian Triniform. That is allowed. I'll take nine. I'm down to 27. And then I will tap four, and I will play Duretti Scrap Savant. Oh. So I will minus two it. I'll sacrifice the Phyrexian Triniform. Okay. So he goes down to one, lo one loyalty? He goes down to one loyalty, and I'll get back Angel of the Ruins. <gasps> oh, he does have some crazy stuff he can do. Yes. This is cool. Yes. Yeah. So when it enters the battlefield, I'll exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. I'll exile the curse, and I'm gonna get rid of your arcane signet because. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> 
All right, they are exiled. And because my Phyrexian Triniform died, I will get three 3-3 three, three golems. Nice, Pretty good. Sir. Guys, I have a board now. That was an insta board, yeah? Love it. All right, after that, I will equip the Angel of the Ruins with the Lightning Greaves. Give it shroud. Then I will play a land for turn, and that is all I can do. I will pass. That was a heck of a That's like a great yeah, turn, Murph. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll uh, <laughs> untap over here. Draw for turn. So I'll play Verdant Sun's Avatar. Oh. Ooh. So when it enters the battlefield, I'll gain five life. Go to twenty-five. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play Myriad Landscape for my land for turn. Pass the turn, turn. Okay. On my turn, I will untap, and then I will draw for turn. I will play a planes for turn. Okay. Then I'm going to play Austere Command uh, because luckily someone destroyed my signet, so I now have no connection to artifacts. Oh no. I'm going to choose to destroy artifacts and creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. Oh, that wrecks me. <laughs> I have no response. I have a response. I'll sacrifice my commander sphere to draw a card. Makes sense. And then I'm going to play Dispatch and I will target Brina. All right, Brina will go back to the command zone. Gotta do that now because it's about to be pretty useless. So all the artifacts. Yep, so my Hornet Queen dies and my Simic Signet die. That could have gone better. Then I will move to combat. So all my flyers will swing in and go at Murph. Well, that's not very nice. So how much total power is that? That is 24 power in the air. 24 power in the air. I'm tapped out. I have no blockers anymore, so I will take 24. All right. Ouch. It hurts, Murph. I'm sorry. Go to 10. And uh, with that, I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap and I will draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna play my land for turn, which is a Quandrus Campus, and I will pass the turn. <gasps> At the end of your turn, Ooh. I'm going to play two and play Fracture, targeting Duretti. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker. Yep, Duretti dies. All right, I will untap. Yeah, all my mana's gone too. I will draw. Okay, guys, I think I have something actually. <gasps> oh. What? Oh. I hate hearing that. I will play an Ancient Den. Then I am going to main phase route. Oh no. Well, that seems amazingly awesome. That's great. That's, that's a big move. That was a good top deck, everyone. It <laughs> was a great top deck. Not a big fan, honestly. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, all the creatures die. We're on full reset mode here. Let's go. Yeah. So when my fish died, it had the text on it because from the re reform that I get a 6-6 six, six whale. Nice. All right, and then I will tap three and I'll play Felden of the Third Path. Oh, that's oh, a great card. That's really good. Ooh. Very good card. Okay, and that is all I can do. I'll pass the turn. All righty, I'm going to untap here. Draw for turn. I'm going to play Alhamrit's Archive. Oh, oh, that is really good. Mind you, it came in the pre-con. And uh, I'll play my land for turn, which is going to be a high market. And then I'm gonna play Sapling of Colfenor. All right, more life gain. I'll pass the turn. Okay, I will untap. I will draw for turn. I will play a swamp for turn. So I will start my turn off by playing Ancient Cravings, which is I draw three cards and lose three life. Uh, I don't feel great about losing that life right now, but I will draw one, two, three, and I will go to 24. And then I'm gonna play a Mind Stone. And then sadly, I just have to Pass the turn. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my stuff died. Okay, Jordan, on your end step, I'm gonna mm -hmm. tap everything. Okay. Which is three blue and then two, three, four, five, six. Oh. So X is equal to six on Commander's Insight. So a target player draws X cards plus an additional card for each time they've cast their commander from the command zone. Oh. I'm gonna target myself. So I'm gonna draw six plus I've cast my commander twice this game. So nice. I'm gonna draw eight. That is really good. That's gonna be a new staple. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's so good. Uh, and then I will go to my untap phase and I will untap everything. Then I will draw for turn. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> it's not gonna be that bad. All right, I'm gonna start by playing an island. Then I am going to go to combat. Yep. Right. And Jordan, I don't hold an eternal grudge against you. However, you did do the most negative things to me so far this game. So I feel it's only fitting I that. I also did the most positive things to you. <laughs> uh, Jordan, I'm gonna swing my 6-6 six, six whale at you. Okay, I will pay three. Yep. And flash in Selfless Squire. When Selfless Squire enters the battlefield, prevent all damage that will be dealt to me this turn. And whenever damage would be dealt to me is prevented, put that many plus one plus one counters on Selfless Squire. Oh. So I do now have a 7-7. So, boop boop. 
Okay, yep, you got a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, thank God. And take no damage, more importantly. Uh, all right, and then after that, I'm gonna tap 10 mana. Oh boy. And I'm gonna recast my commander, Essex. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. You drew all those cards and you just wanted to play your commander? Yeah. That's very funny. That is so odd. <laughs> Speaking of drawing all those cards, I'm gonna move to my end step. And uh, because I have 13 cards in hand, oh. I'm gonna discard six of them. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm not gonna name them all. They don't really matter, go ahead. Oh, but technically before you discard to hand size, I'm going to cycle this Forgotten Cave and draw a card. Yeah, sure. All right, and then I will untap and I will draw. Okay, well, I'll play a Slayer's Stronghold. Mm. Oh, is that one of your ads or was that in the deck? That was in the deck. Nice, it's a good card. I'm going to pay three, activate Felden. Yep. I'm going to make a token copy of the Phyrexian Triniform. That yep. is in my graveyard. That seems good. <laughs> seems good. I'm thinking this might be a problem. <laughs> Jordan, I'm attacking you for nine. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. So down to 15. Uh, and then I will tap six. And then I'm going to replay my commander, Oskir the Reconstructor. Nice. You got a big juicy graveyard for your two recursion engines right there. Prime right? and ready. And then I will move to my end step. I have to sacrifice my token copy of the Phyrexian Triniform. I gotta say, that was a real loss for the art world. And I'll make three, three, three golems. Yikes. Woo! I'll pass the turn. Uh, okay. Let's untap all of this and upkeep, draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna play Ancient Craving. Oh, that's pretty good with Elhamert's Archive. So because of that, I will draw six. One, two, three, four, five. Six, that's even better. <laughs> if only you had to lose six life. <laughs> yeah, right? Only... Instant hand refill. And I'll lose three life. Going to 22. I'll play an Exotic Orchard. I'm gonna play Pristine Talisman. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna play Sangromancer. And because I have Elhamert's Archive, I'll gain two life to 24. Now I will move to my combat step. Um, I'm gonna swing the sapling at you, Josh. Okay, it's just a 2-2? Two -two. It's just a 2-2. Two -two. On that attack trigger, I reveal the top card of my library. Which is? A uh, land. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm tapped out and I will pass the turn. Wait, wait, wait. I do technically block with my um, commander, which is a 4 4. So they just. Boing. All right. Then on my turn, I will untap and then I will draw for turn. Your commander costs 7 now? I believe that is the case. Boo hoo. Mine costs 10. <laughs> I just yeah, paid you it. Started I paid sense. it. <laughs> All right, so I will play a planes for turn. I'm going to tap a mind stone to play a soul ring. And then I'm going to pay seven for my commander. Boom, Brina's back. Back in action, baby. Brina's back, 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 back again. 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 Yeah, yeah. So I'll move to combat. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to swing selfless squire at you, Josh. Well, uh, well actually, and on my attack, right. I uh, will draw a card, and then I can put two 1-1 one -one counters on a uh, creature. So I will put them on Brina. All right, uh, I'm not gonna block. I will take seven and go to 19. Okay. I'm just going to pay four and play a Windborn Muse. So now if you want to attack me, you have to pay two for each creature, which shouldn't be a problem for anybody because everyone just has an enormous amount of mana. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, pass turn. Okay, I will untap. Draw for turn. All right. The first thing I'm gonna do, sorry lady, is uh, I'm gonna swing a 6-6 six, six at you. That's gonna trigger Brina. Yep. And I'm gonna draw a card. Mm -hmm. I will put uh, two counters on, uh, I'll put it on Brina, actually. Uh, I'm not gonna block, so I'll take six. Going to 18. All right, I'm gonna tap six, and I'm gonna play Bane of Progress. Nice. <sighs> <laughs> so all artifacts get destroyed? Two for me, Mind Stone and Soul Ring. Two for me. Four for me, Ancient Den and my three golems. So I get eight counters on the Bane of Progress. It's a 10-10. So three creatures died, and so I have three triggers on Sangromancer, and I gain nine life, going to 27. It's a lot of life gain. I'm gonna play an Exotic Orchard. Then I'm gonna tap three, and I'm gonna play Kodama's Reach. Nice. Yeah, Ooh. there you go. Get that green. And I'll put a Forest into play tapped, and one into my hand. And then, sadly, I cannot make any use of my commander this turn. So why did I pay 10 mana for it last turn? I don't know. Go ahead, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will untap. I will draw for turn. And yeah. make another Triniform. Yep, activate Felden of the Third Path. I'm going to get another Phyrexian Triniform. <laughs> there he is. He got a little smudged. <laughs> He's not gonna be here for very long. <laughs> and then I will pay three mana and I will activate my commander's second ability and I will exile Sculpting Steel from my graveyard. So then I'm going to have two Sculpting Steel tokens enter the battlefield. Okay, well, I feel like I should do this because it's getting bad over there. Uh-oh. In response. Uh-oh. Tap three and play Croson Grip. Ah, oh. Such a good card. Yeah, the grip. 
Uh, and I will target the Triniform. All right, well, that has split second, so I have no response. All right, Triniform gets destroyed. Kaboom! And you are gonna get three golems. Yep. And now your sculpting steel thing happens. Yeah, so I get two sculpting steels, and because there's no other artifacts on the board, I must make those each into golems. So I actually have five golems. Because your creature died, I, it triggers Sangromancer, and I gain three life. All right, and then I guess, well, I guess I'll just play a new card instead. Layla the Blade Reforged. Mm, that's pretty nice. good with okay. your deck, yeah. Yep, I guess I will move to combat, and Lady, I'm gonna attack you with Layla. So on attack, I have two triggers. Jordan's commander, Brina, will trigger, and I will draw a card. And then I will add two counters to my selfless squire. Um, and then Layla herself has a trigger, so I will exile a card from the top of my library. I'm gonna play that this turn. Thousand Year Elixir. Ooh. And Layla will get a 1-1 one, one counter. And I'm not gonna be casting Thousand Year Elixir this turn, so I'm just gonna put it into exile. All right, uh, I will take three. That is what I thought. Go to 27. And then I will play a Lorehold Campus as my land for turn, and that's all I can do, I'll pass. Nice. I will untap all my cards. Draw my card for turn. <laughs> I wonder what it was. Well, uh, I'm gonna play Swamp for turn. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play a picture of blood. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. This is, gonna, this is gonna start adding up. This is not yeah, good. Yeah, it's gonna add up real quick. Oh, I just realized my Gift of Paradise should have died to the Bane of Progress, so I'm just gonna put that in my graveyard. Oh, right. So Bane of Progress should actually be an 11 11. I'm gonna move to my combat step. Uh, I'm gonna attack you, Josh, with my sapling. When you attack with the sapling, you get the Brina trigger, so you get to draw a card. Yes, I've never drawn a card from that. And I will put two counters on my uh, selfless squire. That's a big old squire. That is a big one. Okay, I'll block with my 11-11. Okay, on its attack trigger, I get to look at the top card of my library. It's a land. <laughs> a land again. Alrighty, well. And then I'll take no damage, but neither creature dies. Uh, I will move to my second main, and I'm gonna play Rampant Growth. Okay. So I'm gonna find a forest and put that into the battlefield deck. And um, that's the turn to you, Jordan. Okay, um, on my turn, I will untap, and then I will draw for turn, and then I call together a uh, meeting of the council. I'm going to pay three and play Council's Judgment. Oh. For my first one, I vote for Bane of Progress. So my vote is officially going to be Felden. Uh, I'm gonna vote for Bane of Progress. I'll vote for Felden. Boo. Okay, so they're tied on votes two apiece, so both Bane of Progress and Felden are exiled, correct? That's correct. Okay. Kaboom. Then I'm going to play Rogue's Passage as my land for turn. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then I will pay four. I will activate Rogue's Passage and make Selfless Squire unblockable for the turn. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I'll move to combat, and then I will swing at Murph for 11. Oh, Unblockable. Yeah, I guess I will just take 11 and. Oh, oh no. Sorry, Murph. And then, in my second main phase, I will tap my three remaining lands, and I will play Fane, the Broker. Sweet. Yeah, I'll pass turn. All right, untap everything, and then I will go to my draw step, and I will draw for the turn. Here we go, everybody. All right. Start out by tapping four, playing Amphim Mutineer. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna target to exile the Selfless Squire. All right, it is exiled. All right, and that will give you a 4-3 Salamander. Boom, it's a Salamander. So you got a 4-3. All right, then I'm going to tap three, and I'm going to play Eternal Witness. Oh God. Ooh. Getting back my Hornet Queen. Oh. oh. Then I'm gonna tap seven, including three green, and I'm gonna play Hornet Queen. Whoa. Nice. Yikes. So what's gonna happen is that's gonna come in with four insects, but because of my commander, I'm going to actually make those token copies of Amphim Mutineer. Oh no! So I'm gonna target to exile four things, and I believe those four things are going to be a Sangromancer, a Windborn Muse, a Brina, and a Fane, the Broker. All right. So all four of those things get exiled. And then you all will get salamanders for all that stuff, which Murph is drawing. So I do actually get four copies of Amphimutineer as well as the exiling. So that is four three threes, basically Holy now. Boy. Mm. Okay. All right, then we'll go to combat. And Jordan, mm -hmm. I'm gonna swing at you with a six six and a four four in the air. Okay, the six six is not in the air, right? Correct. Okay. When it dies, I get a nine nine. All right, I will block with I will block the six six with one of my salamanders. Okay. And then I have to take the damage in the air, so I will take four. Okay. All right, so the your salamander dies, my whale lives, and Lady Danger, it's all you. Uh, okay, let's, 
untap all of this and upkeep, draw my card for turn. I'm gonna play my land for turn. I'm gonna play Forgotten Ancient. Yep. I'm gonna move to combat. That doesn't, uh, Jordan, I'm gonna swing my sapling at you. It's a two five indestructible. On attack. On attacks. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that could be a game ender. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, go to blocks. I will block with one of my salamanders and they will bounce off each other. Second main, I'm gonna cast my commander, Will It Esk Essence Seer, cost five now. Uh, and Forgotten Ancient gets a counter because I cast a spell. So it's now a one four and I'll pass turn to you, Jordan. All right, um, top decks for the win, I guess. You got cards in hand. Not once a win. <laughs> <laughs> I will untap for my turn and then I will draw. I will play my land for turn, it's Mikakoro, and then I will activate Mikakoro and all of us get to draw a card. Ooh. Okay. Nice. So I will pay five, and I'm gonna play Stinging Study. Uh, so you're gonna draw three and lose three? That's the plan. Boy, uh, that's a bold move when you're at 11. Okay. Yeah, but I, I feel like the other move is die on board. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So, so go to eight. Did you find anything good? I did, but I'm one mana short. Forgot Ancient gets a counter. Uh, I guess just to give Lady something of a chance. Ooh. I will play Pendant of Prosperity. So uh, who are you gonna give it to? I'm gonna give it to Lady. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. She that's has mana to do it. Okay. Enjoy your prosperity. All right, well that's a spell you cast, so Forgotten Ancient gets another counter. Sure does. This thing's getting annoying. And pass the turn. Okay, I'm gonna untap. I will draw. I'm gonna start off by going to combat. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna swing my commander, the Hornet Queen, and the four Amphimutineer tokens at you, Jordan. And the Whale and the OG Amphimutineer We'll go at you, lady. Before blocks, I'm going to activate Pendant of Prosperity. So I'll draw a card, and I can put a land from my hand onto the battlefield. I will put put a forest. And then I get to draw a card. And then I will put a land onto the battlefield, and I will play a Bojuka Bog, and I will exile your graveyard, uh, Josh. Okay, yep, my graveyard gets exiled. Uh, all right, and then we go to blocks. So a 6-6 six, six and a 3-3? Three, three. Correct. I'm gonna block the 3-3 three, three with my Forgotten Ancient. Yep. And I will take the 6. <laughs> and go to 21. And then I will block uh, three of your token Amphid Mutineers with my Salamanders. Then I will go to death. <laughs> go to the death phase? Yeah. <laughs> Enter death phase. All right. <laughs> All right, I will go to my second main and I will play Teamer Sabretooth. <laughs> and then I'm gonna pay two and I'm gonna activate the Teamer Sabretooth and I'm gonna return the Hornet Queen back to my hand. Holy cow. Yeah. And then I'm gonna tap seven, including three green, and I'm gonna replay the Hornet Queen. Oh God. So on this one, when it comes in, it would create four insects. I feel like I know where this is going. Yeah, but instead I'm gonna create four Hornet Queens. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's nuts. It's nuts. So what I will end up with is four Hornet Queens and 16 one one flyers with Death Touch. Oh. So these are gonna be Hornet Queens. Those will be 16 one one flyers with death touch. <laughs> so those will trigger my Forgotten Ancient and I'll get two more counters on it. And it becomes a 5-8. All right, and with that, Ms. Danger, it's all you. <sighs> this is gonna be great. All right, I'm going to untap all of my cards here. Draw for turn. And then, okay, so I'm gonna play my land for turn. And then I'm gonna go to combat. Yep. I'm gonna attack you with my sapling. Uh, I guess I will block with my team or saber tooth, which is a 4-3. So attack trigger. <laughs> Still not a creature? Unfortunately, not a creature. Man. Uh, All that sapling's done is give information to your opponents. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, okay. And then technically we go to damage, but because the creatures just bounce off, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, it looks like I don't have anything out of my to pull out of my sleeves, and you have a billion flying things uh, coming at me. I think I'm going to have to give it to you, Josh. Good game. Good, good game. game, everybody. Good game. 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 Hornet Queen. Hornet Queen for the win. I like it. Victory. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Josh. You won the game. Thank you. And you didn't get milled out. You did Quandrix proud. I'm proud. Uh. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that being a thing. Like, hey, congratulations, you didn't get milled out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's better than saying, oh, Jimmy, good job, you didn't miss all your land drops. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know which one of those things is better or worse. You know what is better, though? Going to cardkingdom.com slash command zone to order all of your magic products, singles, anything at all. You know, these pre-con decks, I think, are one of the best pre-con sets that has ever come out. Uh, if you want to get your hands on them, cardkingdom.com slash command zone is the place to go. And also, if you want to get your hands on the singles mm -hmm. that you need in order to upgrade these decks to really get them up to fighting power so that they can, you know, rumble with real EDH decks cardkingdom.com slash command zone is the place to go. Yeah, or maybe you saw one of the commanders they played and you want to play it yourself, cardkingdom.com slash command zone, all that good stuff. As always, a big shout out to Ultra Pro as well. If you want to make your battlefield look really cool, every single art on those playmats right now you can get from the Ultra Pro store. You can probably pick it up from Card Kingdom or your local game store as well. Make sure you support that. Yeah, you can also like represent your school. Like if mm -hmm. you're Prismari or Sil Silver, Silver Quill. Oh, you're not getting accepted that. Silver Quill with, a, with an addiction like that. I'm definitely not <laughs> in Silver Quill as we can tell. But if you want wanted to like theme your playmat, your sleeves, your deck box, everything to one college, Ultra Pro has a product that'll let you do that. Yep. And as always, you know, our patrons are the reason that we're able to put out more extra turns. We know that people are clamoring for it. And it seems like now, boy, we put out so many. Pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And uh, like we said, patrons do get to watch extra turns and game nights earlier than the general public. We have a really cool guest on the next episode of Game Nights. If you've been following us on Twitter or our socials, you know who that is. Yeah. It's Post Malone. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> If you couldn't guess by him what's going shh in front of the logo, then I don't know. I mean, maybe he just showed up for a photo shoot. No, so, no. so we shot that game. That's going to be on the next game nights. If you want to watch it early, patreon.com slash command zone. That's where you go join. And it's a good game, too. I'll just put that out there. It's a real fun one. Plus, you get to, like, hang out with Jimmy and I and talk to us on the Discord. But mostly, we know but you're most, there for yeah. Post Malone, which is totally fine. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Extra Turns. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.